Yo, yo, yo. You've probably seen this video by now. A rapper named Ian, just Ian, that's it, did a From the Block performance for his song Figure It Out. But he wasn't exactly um on the block. He was on his patio having dinner with what I'm pretty sure is his family. Like so many other things that have gone viral recently, with the big example being Four Bats, who I've already done a video on, and also he went viral from the exact same platform, Four Shooters Only. A big reason that so many people are tuned in is the discrepancy between how the person looks and how they sound. Ian looks more like the kid who would play devil's advocate in your freshman psychology seminar than the guy who would be rapping about how his big brother is Marshawn Lynch is gonna run through somebody. But here we are, and now he has the Drake follow, so he's out of here. So the internet is ablaze right now, with half the people saying it's fire, including a lot of rappers, not just Drake, and then a lot of people hating, maybe because of how he looks, or because of how he sounds combined with how he looks, saying that he might be cosplaying something, or just trying to be something he's not. Regardless of what side of the fence you're on with that issue, what I want to do in this video is look at his strategy. I'm not really going to try to swing you in one way or another, but before we do a deep dive into how he went viral and the kind of strategy that went into that, let's figure out who Ian is first. And then before that, if you could throw a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I do videos on music every week, usually on Tuesdays, and if you want to see them a day early, go to my Instagram and follow me, Haji Gaviota. Join my broadcast channel. I post the videos in there one day early every week. Also wanted to thank you guys for the love on my new song, Kick It Like We Used To. It's been really nice seeing like some of the people that have found me through this channel going on there and commenting and saying that they liked it. I've got a lot more coming musically this year, so stay tuned. Yeah, back to the video. Ian has been releasing solo music since at least 2022, but before that, he was already in the scene, producing for underground rappers like Isaiah TG and Lil Zelly, sometimes using the name Suburban Cerberus. It's hard to tell exactly when he switched over because there could be a lot of music that's just gone, but there are still remnants of leaked Isaiah TG songs with his name on them, saying produced by Ian, and if you go to Ian's SoundCloud URL, it's still Suburban Cerberus because when you change your SoundCloud display name, it doesn't automatically change your SoundCloud URL, and if you change the URL, then like every link you've ever sent out won't work anymore. Or if you like hyperlinked it somewhere, it's not gonna work anymore. So it's just a lot of work. So it makes sense to just leave it. But this Lil Zelly song posted on there is from 2019 or 2020. So he's been making music for a pretty long time. My point in all this is just to show that he didn't come out of nowhere. He's been posting solo music with him rapping on it for almost two years. And there is an established track record for it. However, it was a snippet for his song Figure It Out that really took things to the next level. It plays on the same principle that I addressed earlier, the way he sounds versus the way he looks. He's playing this hard ass rap song, but he does this little like goofy run in place. Blogs posted it, people argued about it as they're want to do on the internet, either agreeing that it was hard or saying it was cosplay. But as I've said in a few different videos on here, like the hate video I just did last week, discussion like that is how you gain steam in 2024. Every single one of those comments good or bad, helped get Ian to where he is today. And you see, the interesting thing about Ian is that the white boy rapper in 2024 has two different disciples that they could align themselves with, two schools they could study at, with competing ideologies, but some underlying similarities as well. That choice, my friend, those two pills you can pick from, is the Jack Harlow path or the Yeet path. Let's analyze both to fully understand what the hell I'm talking about. So Jack Harlow has been signed to a label. It's a label run by the legendary mixtape organizer DJ Drama and a legendary producer Don Cannon. They also have artists like Lil Uzi Vert. And for years, Jack Harlow was grinding before What's Poppin' came out. He had a pretty dedicated and smaller fan base, but they did exist. He was this goofy looking white guy who made music that kind of fit in that Drake lane. He's talked about it a lot, but what really changed from then to now is figuring out his image. He found something to do with his hair. He got his outfits down pat. He took the glasses off. I mean, basically he glowed up. So rather than being a novelty, somebody that you would hear and then look at and be like, huh, I didn't expect him to sound like that and then kind of go from there. Now he like looks cool and looks aspirational. He's somebody that people want to be or want to be with. He's a sex symbol. Whether you or I find him to be that doesn't really matter because plenty of people do. That's why records like Lovin' On Me can go number one. If he didn't have any sex appeal, there's no way that song could be as big as it is. To put it this way, in 2024, where you see the artist more than you hear them most of the time, image is everything. Even though Jack glowed up, you know, he didn't fully go the pop star route or, you know, start doing crazy dance moves. He's not moving like Chris Brown or even like The Weeknd. He leans into his silly humor. Like, just look at his homoerotic relationship with Drewski. He doesn't take himself too seriously, even though he made himself into somebody that people want to be. 
it's all a part of the bigger picture. And if you noticed, I haven't even really mentioned his music yet, because we're gonna get to that later. When we look at Yeet, on the other hand, he's basically tried to hide his appearance as much as possible at every turn without going the full anonymous route. When he first started catching steam, he was rocking the kafia, which he would call a turban, but really it's a kafia. He also had sunglasses on most of the time, and he would rock a shiesty when he wasn't rocking the scarf. He always has some permutation on of sunglasses, beanie, kafia, shiesty. Why? Well, it's because at least in the beginning, he tried to show himself as little as possible. Yeet makes a harder form of rap music than Jack Harlow does, talking about his struggles with drug addiction and his desire for the biggest Tonka truck that you can find at the dealership, or Lamborghini Urus. There are two reasons why Yeet wasn't like running out of the gates showing exactly what he looked like. One is that it contributed to the aura of the Yeet experience, to have him shrouded in a little bit of mystery. It fits the music and the aesthetic to not have his face fully out there. But the other, and arguably the more important part for what we're talking about in this video, is that if people saw him rapping what his lyrics were on the beats that he picked, you run the risk of starting the kind of discourse that we're seeing about Ian today or that in the past there's been about Jack Harlow. Like, what is this white boy doing? Essentially, there are two paths for a white rapper in the mainstream. Lean into it or shroud yourself and make it less of a thing. Leaning into it, if done right, can turn you into a superstar like Jack Harlow. And shrouding yourself can turn you into that kind of like mysterious aura having style icon like Yeet. And if you go the Jack Harlow route, if you do it too hard, or you do it without taste, then you're less like Jack Harlow and you're a lot more like Lil Mabu, who might be making some money right now, but he's a joke to pretty much everybody. Or Lil Dicky, who chose to just lean into the comedy and turn his life into an FX show. It's very early in Ian's career as a public facing artist, but he's shown that he might have the chops to have that Jack Harlow kind of swag. On Instagram, he's doing these skits that are like kind of inspired by The Office that kind of dry humor. It might not look like much, but imagine Yeet doing something like that. Like, it could be fucking hilarious if it was done right, but that just doesn't really seem like something he would do, at least not earlier in his career. Having his parents in the video is another thing cut right from the Jack Harlow cloth. Yeah, I'm white, here's my family, I'm at dinner, you got me. But is the song hard though? Am I rapping though? That's basically the thesis behind the performance that Ian is going for. And for some, it'll win them over. Go on social media, look at the rappers who are in his comments saying this is fire. They seem to genuinely respect his craft. But the interesting thing about Ian is that he's not like another Jack Harlow. He's combining that everyman swag with way more forward thinking music that's a lot closer to what Yeet is doing. And it's very rooted in the current underground sound. A lot of people kind of lazily compare him to Yeet because they're both white, they both had a big viral moment, and they both have production that can be kind of forward thinking and loud and chaotic. But vocally, I don't think they're really that similar. Ian reminds me more of like Talon WIA or like Talon Where You At is like another underground rapper. I don't know how to say his name out loud because I mean, I'm sure a bunch of y'all know this feeling like you find a rapper on the internet and you have no idea how to say their name out loud because for the most of the time you're just reading his name, right? Like anyway, he reminds me of that guy whose music I love. Ian is a little more like lyrical and like traditional bar focused than Yeet is, at least to me. And I'm not saying that Yeet's saying nothing. It's just more that like he says, I'm fighting my demons and I'm struggling. I really want this Urus. And he says it in like ways that are clever and sometimes really funny, low key. Like when he said he has beef with his kidney. But it's like, it's not as like, here's the punchline, you know? Jack Harlow's music is much more rooted in what the average guy off the street would expect hip hop to sound like, especially compared to artists like Yeet or Ian. He's inspired by the Drakes, J. Coles, and Kendricks of the generation before him. And those guys were inspired by the Kanye's, Pox, like the real like hip hop legend dudes. They follow a lineage that you can trace back to the origins of hip hop. I mean, you watch my video on the big three, I kind of talked about that or my video on Kanye. Now I'm not saying Jack completely rips these guys off. He has his own flavor, but it fits into that world. I don't think the same can be said for the genre that Yeet has found himself in. We call both those things hip hop, but they don't have that much in common with each other sometimes. Yeet is much more attuned to rappers like Future, who obviously is a big part of hip hop and arguably the most influential artist in rap music in the last 10 years or so. But when it comes to like what an old head or a suburban mom would listen to and think this is hip hop, it's not really what comes to mind. So when we look at Ian and we try to predict a trajectory, it's interesting because he doesn't really make obviously mainstream rap music. He's making stuff that's still attuned to what's going on in the underground. Now the thing is, what's mainstream in hip hop is always constantly changing. And I think with artists like Destroy Lonely, what Playboy Cardi has going on right now, Yeet being as big as he is, like maybe that is what we will start to consider to be mainstream rap music. One of my favorite underground music publications, No Bells, pointed out that before Figure It Out and songs like Grand Slam and the attention that Ian was getting, he was rapping on beats that were a little more out there. 
infusing IDM or like intelligent dance music, think like Aphex Twin, with Plug to make something that sounded pretty unique. Songs like Uphill really show that. It's also interesting to see that the covers for the older songs, he's kind of doing the mysterious thing a little bit. He was at least going for a more guarded, hidden image than he is now, where he's at a dinner table with his family. And it's probably because he hadn't yet realized that if he put himself out there in that way, he was going to get way more attention. The From the Block video, as soon as I saw that, I wanted to do a video about it because I think it's so fascinating watching him make decisions about how to best present his career at this early of a stage. I felt like he was really choosing a direction with his marketing when he did that. A homemade snippet on social media is one thing. This is a whole production, and it's on a YouTube channel that has a built-in audience. And in his genius bio now, it says he's signed with Boo Thiam, which is Akon's brother, to the Boo Vision label. So clearly he's tapped in, and he's in rooms with people where they're planning stuff like this out. Now before you say it, no, he's not an industry plant, I mean at least not to my knowledge, but it doesn't really seem like he is. But labels will come sniffing when someone starts building momentum like he is by, by himself. As far as I can tell, he got his own buzz going and then the label steps in. That's really just the way it goes. A lot of people will probably never like Ian because of his image, but by taking the Jack Harlow route, he's basically accepting that and saying, okay. In the past, the roles that were carved out for white rappers would feel more like the character from Malibu's Most Wanted. They would kind of try to like downplay their upbringing or make themselves look really tough or just try really hard to cosplay and be something that they're not, like Slim Jesus. That's what really turns people off. With Ian, he's at least choosing not to do that with his image, which is smart. But with the lyrics, though, he is kind of dipping his foot into some interesting stuff. I make the whole trap jump right now like a parlay hit. It sounds a lot less convincing when you're visually not in a trap house. You're on a pretty nice patio eating dinner with your family. The second half of the bar is saying like a parlay hit. You know, that's kind of funny. That feels like it would fit. That feels like something Jack Harlow would say even. I am interested to see if he keeps saying things like the trap. And I'm overall just genuinely really curious to see where Ian takes his career. I think he's a smart and talented guy, I can tell that. And he's made some very tasteful choices in the past, especially with his production choices before the songs that really blew up started going off. And he worked as a producer with some really great underground artists. He's clearly cut his teeth, at least musically. The way he's moving right now is going to get him a lot of attention and jumpstart his career. As a fan, I hope he finds a way to balance that newfound attention with some of the cooler and more interesting things he was doing musically. I think artists like Yeet have shown you that you don't have to just like lose the sound that got you there. Either way, it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch.